Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers. It is a little bit tricky. You can solve this problem using Hardy-Weinberg rules, but not directly, but a little bit indirectly and I'm going to explain why. So here's a problem. If a disease with a dominant X-link inheritance affects one out of 100 of males in a population, what is the frequency of the gene in the population? What portion of females in the population will be affected by this X-link dominant disease? I didn't change the wording of this problem, but actually instead of gene, you have to read allele because gene is just a locus on the chromosome specific locus. But in that locus, we can find genes of the different variants, which we call allele. So actually it's have to be read as alleles. In some people who just begin studying genetics, such uh, small uh, discrepancies may cause a lot of confusion. Now take a look. For example, male may have defective X chromosome and normal Y chromosome, or also may have normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. Now imagine that here is a gene pool. So let this cloud represent the gene pool. And in this gene pool, we can find X chromosomes of two kinds, defective X chromosome and normal X chromosome. Now here's a question. If the frequency of the defective and normal X chromosome, actually this is not the whole chromosome that is normal and defective, only one specific allele defective, but for the simplicity, we just change the color of the whole chromosome. So now the question, what is the probability in this gene pool, for example, if we have for a male to be affected? And the probability would be, you say, one half. We have only two uh, chromosomes in gene pool, which are represented with the same frequency. So the probability to be affected would be one half and to be unaffected would be also one half. By the way, X chromosome and Y chromosome are different chromosomes. They are not homologous, only very, very short uh, fragments on these chromosomes uh, would be homologous that allows them to line up during meiosis. But otherwise, this is going to be completely different chromosomes. For example, on the X chromosome, about 1000 genes and on the Y chromosome, less than 100 genes. And these genes are not the same. So when males have uh, some defective allele on the X chromosome, this, even if it is a recessive genetic disorder in males would manifest itself as dominant genetic disorder because males just don't have another X chromosome with normal allele. Now take a look what is going to be a probability for a male to be affected. And you can say that this is going to be one out of three. So now chances for this male to be affected would be one out of three. And probability for uh, male to be unaffected would be two out of three. Let's add more healthy X chromosomes. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now probabilities would be for male to be affected one out of 10 or 10% 10 and probability for the male to be phenotypically and genotypically normal would be 90% or nine out of 10. Now you see it is very easy to answer the question, what is the frequency of this allele in the gene pool? If affected males happens with the frequency one out of 100, then the frequency of this defective allele is going to be one out of 100. And the information that this is dominant genetic disorder, X-link uh, genetic disorder, doesn't affect our calculations because males, because considered to be hemizygous, not homozygous, not heterozygous, but hemizygous, meaning that they have only one X chromosome. It doesn't matter whether this uh, genetic disorder is recessive or dominant, they are going to still express it as dominant genetic disorder because they don't have another X chromosome to offset this defective allele. 
Okay, now you know that if the frequency of the males who are going to have this genetic disorder is 1 out of 100, then the frequency of this defective allele in the gene pool is also going to be 1 out of 100. Now let's think about genotypes which female may have. Female may have two normal X chromosomes. Female can be heterozygous, meaning one chromosome can be normal, another with defective allele on it. And the last genotype that female may have, two defective X chromosomes, or two chromosomes, X chromosomes with defective alleles on each of them. Now take a look. If we know the frequency of the defective allele, which is 1 out of 100, that means that we also know the frequency of the normal allele, which is going to be 99 out of 100. And now the simple mass is going to be as follows. Take a look. So probability for female to be of this genotype would be 1 hundredths times 1 hundredths. And this is going to be 1 out of 10 thousand females are going to be homozygous uh, for this genetic disorder and this is dominant genetic disorder of course all of them are going to be affected with this genetic disorder so one out of ten thousand females would belong to this genotype and the frequency of this heterozygous genotype is going to be as follows so 99 over 100 is going to be a frequency of the normal X chromosome and the frequency of the defective X chromosome is going to be 1 out of 100. So we can say that frequency of this genotype is very close to 1. And the frequency of this genotype is going to be 99 over 100 for one X chromosome times 99 over 100 for the other X chromosome to be normal. So this is roughly 99%. So probability and heterozygous are going to be another 1%. And those who are going to be homozygous, uh, not recessive, but homozygous for this dominant genetic disorder would be negligible small number. So this number plus this number would make 1%. And this is going to be our answer for this question. What portion of females in the population will be affected by the dominant X-linked disease? This is going to be this group of females, which makes roughly 1%. Some people who like mathematics may get into the trap saying, oh, I want exact number here. But take a look. We are here talking about the rough estimation. This is not exact numbers. This is just approximation. So 1% is going to be very good answer. We don't need an answer like 0 0.999 something. Or for example, instead of 99 here, 98.999 something. We don't care because this is just going to be approximation. You have to understand that these numbers can slightly fluctuate because here we are talking about statistics. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.